some genuine drama, some amazing moments. But the whole thing just, just feels flat and strange with these decisions being made the way they are now, Glenn. Yes, uh, it is difficult, isn't it? And the time it takes. I think they need to take their time and have a look at it. I'm, I'm not too worried about that. But, yeah, it's confusing. It's confusing because sometimes, you, even when you're watching it from, from slow motion and VAR must have the same problem, they're taking so much... They're looking at fractions. And did, the only, is that, on certain occasions, there's only two people on, in the stadium that know whether there was contact or not. Mm. And that's the two players involved sometimes. So, so it's very, very difficult for them. I just think we've got to, we've got to really th rethink the VAR situation. If we're pontificating over fractions of offsides and things like that, we don't know when the ball's being played, <laughs> when there's actually contact on the ball. If it's like, was he touched, was he not touched? The one thing that's come out of this for me, Rio, we were speaking about, if you're a defender back in there watching now and you watch this again, you've got to try and make a tackle. You don't try and stay on your feet and, 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 let, and let the fella go. You're talking by. about the penalties, yeah, both the penalties David Luiz and David Luiz, one, yeah. both of them. You don't. You have to make the tackle. That gets you a yellow card instead of a red. Yeah. There's got to be something wrong there. It's got to be something wrong. It's it, crazy. Yeah. You, as a defender, I played. I'm now sitting there and saying, whatever happens, when I'm in that box, I absolutely have to go through the man, smash yeah. the player, because I can't leave anything to doubt. I can't leave any any uncertainty and leave it to Stockley Park or the man on the park with a whistle. And for people at home wondering why, this is because if you don't make an attempt to play the ball in that situation... You get sent off. You get sent off. Yeah, so the double, the double jeopardy comes into that. Uh, so it's, it's, it is so confusing. And what is a big thing that come out today, which I'm not surprised about and we've seen many times this season, but once again, players looking absolutely confused on yeah. the pitch as to what, yeah. how, where, who. That's, and football can't be like that. Football forever was black and white. We knew where we stood. Right now, there's so much confusion. We've just seen a record equaling scoreline, 9 0 in the Premier League game. And we are sitting here talking about uh -huh. minute decisions made hundreds of miles away from the game of football. Like, is that the future? Yeah, because there's a new, a new rule or a new uh, understanding of a rule that comes out every single week now. So it kind of takes away from. We're sitting here, 9 0 game. It's an unbelievable yeah, game. But in it's that the sense. clear and obvious that, that we brought VAR in, and I was for VAR, but not for fractions and these decisions. Let it, on-field decisions, let them, let them continue with the on-field. Let them go over to the screen and have a look and let them make the decisions. But when it's clear and obvious that it's offside or not offside or him, that is where we're getting ourselves in trouble. OK. Strange old night, wasn't it? However, Manchester United will be delighted with that result. Let's get some reaction. Marcus Rashford is with Des. Marcus, that was clinical, it was unforgiving, it's a record win as well. It equals the 26-year record of 9 0 against Ipswich. A, a fantastic night. Yeah, um, you know, it's always good to score, to score lots of goals. Um, and yeah, we're just, we're just happy, you know, it was, it's three points that we've needed. You know, we've, we've dropped some points in the last few games. Um, and we needed to get back to winning ways, so today was a, a brilliant opportunity to do that. We look like the strikers are going to make a statement tonight. I mean, and it can be a puzzle when you come up against 10 and eventually nine men, but you, you, the movement and everything you're doing was actually making it much simpler for yourself tonight. Yeah, that's it. Um, just be as simple as possible, keep moving, um, and just be positive. It's easy to take your foot off the gas and, and just keep possession, but you know, we wanted to go out in the second half and, and score more goals and you know, the lads did that in the second half. Yeah, you dismantled Southampton. But no, some sympathy for them for us, but no sympathy for the red card. That could have been very serious at the start of the game. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. Right? I think he's quite unlucky. I don't think he's meant it in a nasty way. Um, but he's just a little bit late there, and, and Scott has felt the, the consequences of that. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think it was a red card. But you know, unfortunate for the, for the young player. The first half was merciless, though. Four 0 at half time. There were threats everywhere. Yeah, um, I think the, the first half really set the tone for us. Um, from there, when we're coming at half-time, it's just about keeping the, the right mentality and the positive attitude, really, and, and going to finish the game and score more goals. And you passed Eric Cantona on the United all-time list of goal scorers, and that's a pretty impressive <laughs> list to be on. And, you, and, of course, a player that has been revered by United fans through the years. Yeah, he's, he's obviously a, a top player that's that done a lot for this club. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to, to go past him today. And, um, you know, for me, it's, I just want to score more goals and keep helping the team. And we saw the hunger of the team, but it was essential to respond, wasn't it? City are charging, Liverpool are getting back on track too. Yeah, it's, but we, we, we have to not look at them and we focus on ourselves. You know, we're, we're a team that's still improving. Um, we're still... We're not a team that's been, you know, a ready-made team for the last two or three years. Um, I think we're just getting there now and, you know, we're still learning a lot as a group, so... Um, 
we have to concentrate on ourselves and just keep improving and working on ourselves. I want to change tack a little bit because we saw the statement on the front of the programme tonight, the, the, the United team united against racism. And it's important to, to speak out because players are being targeted, yeah. players are to put up with some you know, just unforgivable abuse. Yeah, it's, um, it's something that's, that's happening and, um, you know, as much as we, we try and make it look like a, a, a sport that, has, that is full of positives, which um, for me growing up, that's what I always seen football as. It was a sport where people can express themselves and, and just be themselves on the pitch. Um, and it's, it's disappointing when things like this happen in football, but, you know, the reality of it is that it's, it's happening and we all have to, to stand up and, and be heard, really. Um, and, and that's all I can really say on it. Um, I think only time will tell if if the situation improves. Um, but as for the time being, it's not really improved over the last few years. Thanks very much, Time Marcus. Thank you. Molly, congratulations. There's a 26-year-old record match tonight. The biggest win for United. 9-0 yeah. Ipswich. Ipswich, yeah. And they scored five. So we share the goals more between the, between the players. So, uh, of course, when... Uh, when the game starts like it does, it's, it was all, always going to be about if you can get the first goal. Because this, you've seen so many examples of ten men that they just close up shop and uh, they get a get a draw. So it was about getting keeping keeping their tempo high and get the first goal and then just keep on from there. Yeah, you were ruthless in punishing them. You moved the ball, good movement all around, and all the front players. You could tell they were hungry for goals. Yeah, we we have been waiting for them to uh, to show the magic, and of course tonight was a night that they could uh, go and enjoy. We haven't had too many of them uh, where you can uh, sit down in the second half and enjoy the football. So uh, uh, they they enjoyed it. Uh, some good performances. Had you wondered if the players recover their mojo, as the phrase is, before yeah. the match? Well, they have, haven't they? Yeah, of course they have. They lots of confidence from a performance like this and a result. Uh, scoring goals is always good for a forwards and a team. But the pattern was set 79 seconds in. I mean, Scott was lucky not to be seriously injured there. Yeah, yeah it was, you don't really see many of them tackles around anymore, so uh, I'm glad Scott uh, is, is well. And uh, it looked like a bad one uh, when he stayed down, but he's, um, he's, he's just got away with, uh, with just a couple of bruises there. Having praised the front line, the fullbacks got things going. Luke Sean. Aaron Wambasaka. Brilliant, yeah. I've, so Aaron kept going in the far post and Luke kept uh, putting crosses in, which we've uh, asked him to do. And I thought uh, they did well enough. Because it's, it's always hard when they went just outside the box. They So it was about getting good quality in the box from width. And we did. You had wave after wave. And before the match, we were talking about Edison Cavani and, and the example he sets to the other yeah. players. And so you had the luxury of taking him off at halftime because he was devastating in the first half. It was good, uh, but he got a bad, uh, bad uh, tackle on his ankle, and uh, so there was no point taking any risks. So hopefully, it won't swell up too much. And Marcus has passed Eric Cantona in the goals, United <laughs> goals list. That's not a bad thing to do at the age of what, 23. That's not bad. Uh, Eric was a fantastic player to play with, and Marcus has got a great career ahead of him. And uh, what he's done this season or this year, uh, it just shows that he can still focus on his football as well. Well done. It's a memorable night. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. And that indeed, particularly for a man who made a career out of scoring goals himself. Uh, look, before we get on to the whole decisions, referees and VAR and all that, what we're here for is the football. And tonight from Manchester United, the football was ruthless. Yeah, and it's just what the doctor ordered after the week they've had um, in terms of dropping points. Got themselves into a great position in the league um, and didn't justify almost themselves. We, we asked for a performance. Yeah, they were helped with a red card. But listen, this is what their strike force needed. They needed a game like this where they could fill their boots, regain some confidence, and um, really get some momentum going again. And that, again, as Ben mentioned it earlier, full back to full back, being able to kind of commit men forward because of the sending off, enabled them to open up, and they'd done it well. And you can always go up against 10 men and almost feel that it's actually harder than playing against 11 sometimes because they sit back and they wait to be broken down. But May United done it perfectly today, spread the pitch wide, made it made spaces for, from the middle areas through that width in the team, 
and didn't get caught up trying to go through the middle of the park, did they, Glenn? No, the, the, the thing when you're playing against the 10 men, you, you, you give width. You get as much width as you can down both sides at the same time. You haven't got to worry about them hitting you on the counter. So you can throw bodies in, in there as well. But uh, they were ruthless, as you said, Jake. Absolutely ruthless. Mentally, they were, you know, you could tell second half, each player was driving each other on. We don't matter what the score is, we're going to just keep going at Southampton. You feel sorry for Southampton. They had nine players out, you know, uh, first team players injured. That's bad enough. Then get a man sent off, you know, so early in the game. 89 minutes to play with 10 men mm. is very, very difficult against quality players. But some of the finishing was, was excellent for Man United. And you've got to say, you know, it was a very, very ruthless professional performance. Th these games can easily become difficult yeah. if you don't approach it the right way. Why can they? Because you could, the opposition go down to 10 men and all of a sudden you take your foot off the gas. Mm. It's going to be easy. You expect an easier game. But really... If you don't think about it and play the right way against them, and you have to play different against them, then. Yeah. That's the difference. You've got to switch your game plan up a little bit. They've probably prepared for this game to play a particular way. Then, obviously, you go to 10 men, like Black Glenn said, we spoke about earlier off air. You've got to spread the pitch wide, and you can easily get caught up with, we all want to score, we all want to yeah. score, and come central and get caught up in that. You go down one side, you drag the team over, who's got 10 men, and you change the play as quick as you can, mm. make movement there, and you're going to get in. But, um, but it's, it's a different scenario. If you've got 20 minutes to play against 10 men, it's hard. Mm. And the score line always comes into it. If it's nil-nil, that's mm. hard to break 10 men down sometimes. But 89 minutes, mm. you know, you haven't got to panic, you haven't got to sort of push people forward into position. You can just take your time. And United did it actually so professional today. They really did uh, put Southampton to the sword. Yeah, and let's remember it was a Southampton team that came into this with a huge injury crisis, yeah. teenagers on the bench. They were already down yeah. to the bare bones as things were. Um, and then they ended up with a really bad scoreline. At the very end, of course, the scoreline was made even worse. And as the players walked off the field, Jan Bednarek, who was involved in the penalty incident, <laughs> At the very end, we heard this, just after he was sent off. Have a listen what he said as he went off down the tunnel. It's not a foul. Marshall said it's not a foul. Well, there you go. Marshall himself saying it's not a foul. Um, another, other strikers concur. Peter Crouch um, has tweeted saying, isn't he trying to get out of the way, Bednarek? Michael Owen says if that's a penalty, then the game is gone. Now... Obviously, because the referee went over to the screen, we're all now going to criticise VAR for getting it wrong, right? This was a human decision. Mike Dean on the field, Graham Scott at VAR, yet between them, they managed to work out that this should have been a penalty kick. How have they come to that decision, Glenn? Well, I, I, I've got to say, I didn't see at, the, at that time. I think Martial was, was on his way down before the contact was made, if I'm really honest. And, and if I'm expecting Mike Dean there to look at that and change his decision and say, actually, I, I might have actually, I'm going to book Martial for going down too early. Mm. There wasn't enough contact there at that time when Martial starts going down. There you go. And we only know the two players, there, there's a, maybe a contact on his ankle. Well, we know what Martial it, thinks. <laughs> it's all, yeah, it's <laughs> after. It's after he starts to fall down. It's a very difficult one, but when you, when you go over to the screen, I'm expecting the, the referee, Mike Dean, then to just say, actually, no, there wasn't mm. contact there. The, the, the rule is nonsense. That rule is nonsense at the moment, that he actually, if you try and make a tackle and bring him down and, and clash him and say, look, I was trying to attempt to play the ball, I'm only going to get a yellow card. And try and get out of the way, we've seen two players do it today, try and get out of the way, try and not foul the player, completely not foul him, and then there's contact of some sort or the referee decides there is contact, you get a red card. That can't be right. It goes against everything that you're brought up in, yeah. understanding and knowing in, in, in football. It's a crazy rule, crazy rule. And you, the reaction on social media tells you everything you need to know, know about it. There's absolute disbelief everywhere. Yeah. Everyone can't believe it. And, and Mike Dean goes to that. I mean, he's given 109 red cards in his career as a Premier League referee, the most out of any referee in the Premier League history. So but he doesn't mind getting his red card that's, that, so. that, that's the rule. So Mike Dean's only his decision, where I think he's made a poor decision, possibly. Listen, if he'd have booked Martial there, I don't think any of us would be going. No, we wouldn't be That's talking a about it. A dreadful decision yeah. from Mike Dean. Actually, I think we'd have some sympathy. I'm expecting him to do that. So it's, but it's the rule. I don't understand the rule. That rule can't be right. Where you where you get a red card if you're trying to stay on your feet and not make the tackle, 
and, and if you do try and make a tackle, miss the ball, bring the yeah. player down, you only get a yellow. And it's still in the goal score, taking that goal scoring opportunity away, whether you're trying to get out of the way or whether you're trying to make a tackle. But defenders out there, like I said earlier, they're all going to be thinking, we've got to go as if, like, pretend we're going to go and try and win the ball. Exactly. You, you, so <laughs> you're, you're, being, you're going to have to be taught now and you have to be rebooted as an individual to under, into the new understanding of the game. You must really go in and try to win the ball rather than trying yeah. to get out of the way. Obviously, the but Peter crazy. Walton's part of our team. Peter, I'm guessing this rule's been brought in so that if you make a cynical foul, no attempt to play the ball, just bring the player down, you get a red card. But David Luiz clearly accidentally clips his opponent. What we've just seen there, it looks like Jan Bednarek does his best to get out of the way. Yeah, on both occasions, a penalty and a red card. Yeah, well, the, the law was primarily brought in to save goalkeepers from being sent off when they're down low at a, at a forward's feet trying to parry the ball away and they miss, they bring the forward down, a penalty kick's given and the goalkeeper's sent off. And the lawmaker said, no, that can't be right, so there's a double jeopardy there. So they introduced the fact that if you make an attempt to play the ball, it's not double jeopardy and therefore just a yellow card. Mm -hmm. And that went on to forwards. And now we can see uh, where the defenders are not playing the ball and yet because they're not playing the ball, the law says he has to be sent off. So Mike Dean was hamstrung there. As mm. soon as Mike Dean saw that as a foul, and yes, we can debate whether or not it was a foul or not, yeah. but once he saw it as a foul, he had no option but to send the player off because that's what the law says. Yeah. It's not a foul, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, again, Rio, um, we go back to VAR, and the VAR is looking to make sure that Mike Dean hasn't made a clear and obvious error in awarding the foul. And the, the VAR said, no, I don't think it's a clear and obvious error. And that, and that therefore, the, the foul stands. So, yes, we can debate till the cows come home, but unfortunately, Mike Dean has the say. Look, Peter, you've got a hotline to the PGMOL who are governing these rules. They're working with IFAB to work out the, the laws of the game and then they're, they're governing them on the, on the field of play. What do they think about the state of football at the moment and the experience of people watching the game? Are they, are they happy with it, do you know? Well, um, they're not unhappy with it. However, they know that um, it's part of the evolving uh, sport that we've got at the moment, especially with the introduction of VAR. And we're looking now at offsides. I mean, we've seen already the scene on offside decisions. And along with other aspects of the law, FIFA or IFAB, who make the law, along with the uh, competitions throughout the world, are now beginning to look at minute details because VAR is exposing the law that needs to catch up with technology that we're using on field. Right. Mm. No, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. But it's just we've got ourselves into this difficult position, haven't we, where we've created the tech and the laws aren't, aren't there yet. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. The, the, the laws are playing almost catch-up. Yeah. And we can see that. And we can see that from the introduction of certain types of um, downgrading of handball, etc., throughout this season. Well, that's the irony, I suppose. If you had an accidental handball in the box, they'd say that's an accident. If you accidentally clip an opponent, you end up with a red card and you, you, you leave the field to play. Peter, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate that. But you're totally right. We can have a look at the David Luiz incident for people that haven't seen it. It's going to totally change the way that defenders act in these situations. Yeah. It's going to have to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, David Luiz is playing catch-up here. But he, he doesn't makes no attempt to, mm. to, to swipe the legs of the, uh, the striker there. And then he's punished. I, don't, I just can't understand why. Can they, they, the referee should be able to, or the people at Stockley Park doing the VAR should be able to say, actually, there was no intent there. He didn't try to clip his legs. and He wasn't cynical. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it's not a red card. But here, mm -hmm. I just can't understand it. These, these two decisions basically ruin the game. Do you know what I mean? And they, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't have actually been red cards, I don't believe. And in the second game, the Manchester United game, of course, people can say, well, why are you focusing on an incident when, the, when it's 8 9 nil? Yeah. The point is, this can happen in a nil-nil in the 91st minute of a game when the title's on the line or relegation's on the line. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that could be nil-nil last minute of a game. And, uh, you, you know, the debate then would be enormous. But um, there is a chink there in the law. There, there, that, it can't be right. They've got, as Peter said earlier, they've got to assess this now where technology is stent of fractions. They've got to re reassess a few, a few of these uh, laws. They really have because, you know, the David Luiz one, there was contact there, but he was trying desperately. He was out of position. He couldn't get back mm. to make a tackle anyway. He knew that, so he's trying his best to just to get out of the way. Slight, slight touch there, whereas Martial, it's debatable. He even said he didn't, it wasn't a foul. So mm. there you go. Funny old game, getting funnier by the week, isn't it? Uh, we're going to take a quick break when we come back.